In the vast landscape of Christendom, there lies a captivating beacon of hope, a whispering among believers passed down from generation to generation like a cherished treasure. The secret rapture, you may choose to believe it or not, but here's why it is of such significance. The secret rapture is a theological hope embraced by many Christians that refers to the return of Jesus to earth twice, the first time like a thief in the night as the Bible says in Revelation, Matthew and 1 Thessalonians. At such time he will take away the true believers to heaven, leaving the rest of humanity to endure a period of great tribulation. The second time will be a public event witnessed by all marking the end of the world. Jesus himself spoke of two men in the field, one taken and the other left behind, or two women grinding at the mill, one taken and the other left. Paul in his letters speaks of being caught up together with the Lord in the clouds. We live in a world teetering on the brink of chaos where the faithful long for deliverance from the trials and tribulations of life. The secret rapture will usher us into the safety and splendor of heaven. As Christians, it's an exciting prospect, an event not to be missed. And get this, the best part is that the Antichrist will appear afterward to make those left behind worship the beast, the statue, the beast, the statue. We're, we're not exactly sure, but we think it's the beast. We apologize. Please allow for momentary regrouping. Thank you. We missed the part where the wicked will get a second chance to accept Jesus, but we're not sure where that fits in, so let's move on. Now, after all that confusion, here's the intriguing bit. Despite its popularity, there's no explicit reference to the secret rapture in the Bible. Yes, you heard it right. This widely accepted belief is not directly stated in the Holy Scriptures. The Bible, in fact, talks about the second coming of Jesus Christ, but it doesn't mention anything about a secret rapture happening before this event. This absence of clear biblical support for the secret rapture has stirred quite a controversy among believers. So we're left with a burning question. If the secret rapture isn't directly mentioned in the scriptures, where did this idea come from? How did it propagate and become such a widely accepted belief? Stay tuned while we dig that skeleton up. The roots of this belief emerged relatively recently and trace back to the early 19th century, popularized by figures like John Nelson Darby and later Cyrus Ingerson Schofield in a time of great religious revival and exploration. Darby, a British evangelist and a member of the Plymouth Brethren, was a prominent figure in the development of dispensationalism, a theological system that divides history into different periods or dispensations, each marked by a different covenant between God and humanity. Darby's teachings were revolutionary in their time, introducing the notion of a secret rapture where faithful believers would be whisked away to heaven without warning, leaving the rest of the world to face a period of great tribulation. This interpretation of biblical prophecy was a radical departure from traditional views, but it found an eager audience among those seeking new understandings of scripture. But how did this idea, born in 19th century England, gain such traction? The answer lies in its appeal to certain religious groups, particularly those with a strong apocalyptic focus. The concept of a secret rapture offered a tantalizing promise of escape from worldly suffering and a direct path to divine salvation, making it an attractive proposition for many believers. Darby's teachings crossed the Atlantic, finding fertile ground in the United States. Here, they were popularized through the wide distribution of the Schofield Reference Bible in the early 20th century, a Bible that contained footnotes endorsing the rapture theory. This widespread distribution helped embed the concept of the secret rapture in the consciousness of many American Christians. So it's a relatively new concept, but the story continues. The secret rapture propaganda spread like hot cross buns. Um, that doesn't seem to roll right. Okay, wildfire spread like wildfire, capturing the imaginations of millions. It spread across continents, permeating various religious groups. It was an idea that resonated with many, a concept that offered hope, mystery and intrigue. The allure of being chosen, of being whisked away into the heavens, was too enticing to ignore for many believers. But the question is, what factors contributed to this rapid acceptance and spread? Well, one of the key factors was the socio-political climate at the time. The world was changing rapidly, with new ideas and beliefs challenging established norms. People were looking for something to hold on to, something that offered certainty and hope in a world filled with uncertainty and change. The secret rapture theory provided that. Another factor was the power of storytelling. The theory was presented in a way that was both captivating and easy to understand. It was a narrative that painted a brilliant picture of the end times, complete with dramatic imagery and high stakes. 
This made it highly appealing to a wide range of people, irrespective of their educational or social backgrounds. Who'd want to suffer from Christian FOMO? Moreover, the advent of mass communication tools played a significant role. The spread of the secret rapture theory was facilitated by the proliferation of print media, radio broadcasts, and later television. These mediums allowed the theory to reach a wider audience, thereby accelerating its acceptance. Finally, the endorsement by influential religious leaders and organizations gave the theory a significant boost. Their support lent it credibility, making it easier for followers to accept and embrace the idea. And just as it spread, it sparked debates and disagreements which continue even today. Any idea that ruffles the feathers of traditional views is bound to stir controversy. The secret rapture is no exception. At the heart of the discord lies a fundamental disagreement on the interpretation of biblical texts. On one side, you have proponents who fervently argue that the secret rapture is a clear and undeniable part of Christian eschatology. They point to passages in the Bible, such as Thessalonians, where it's mentioned that believers will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord. On the other hand, the scriptures begin to expose the cracks in the foundation of this theological edifice. Passages that are used to support the notion of a secret gathering of believers actually reveal a different story, a story of unity and clarity, not secrecy and confusion. These same scriptures challenge the idea as a gross misinterpretation. The Bible does say Christ will return twice. The first time his feet will not touch the ground, but the concept of the secret rapture is a modern invention, not grounded in historical Christianity. The controversy doesn't stop at interpretation, it also extends to the implications of the secret rapture. Critics voice concerns that the belief may lead to complacency among believers, who may feel assured of their salvation and neglect their moral and spiritual duties. Supporters, however, see it as a beacon of hope a promise of salvation that strengthens their faith and motivates them to live righteously. Despite the controversy, the idea of the secret rapture continues to captivate many. The secret rapture, whether you believe in it or not, has a lasting fascination that cannot be denied. Why does it fascinate us so? The secret rapture's portrayal in popular culture has added fuel to the fire. Its vivid depiction has been the inspiration for numerous books, movies, and songs, providing a rich canvas for creative expression. It has given us gripping narratives like the Left Behind series, which paints a vivid picture of a post-rapture world. It's also been woven into the lyrics of songs, echoing the yearning for divine intervention and salvation. And it's not just confined to the realm of fiction. The secret rapture has influenced real-world discussions and debates, shaping the way we perceive and interpret the Bible and other religious texts. It has sparked conversations about faith, morality, and the nature of the divine. It has challenged us to question, to go deep into our beliefs and confront our fears and hopes about the future. So whether a believer or skeptic, the secret rapture has left a permanent mark on our collective imagination. It's an idea that transcends religious boundaries, uniting people in their quest for understanding and meaning. But what does the Bible actually say? Consider Christ's promise to be with his church until the end of the world. If a secret rapture was to precede his return by seven years, this promise would lose its significance. Moreover, passages like Matthew 13, which depict the coexistence of the righteous and wicked until the end, contradict the notion of a secret gathering of believers. Jesus himself emphasized that the resurrection of the righteous would occur at the last day. Paul's writings affirm this unity of events, describing the Lord's descent, the resurrection, and the gathering of the saints in one instance. Doesn't he also say Christ will be coming with trumpet sound? Imagine how secretive that will be. Oh my, anyway, he continues with the dead rising and the righteous caught up in the clouds, which all point to a single climactic event. Furthermore, biblical texts like Revelation 6, 16 to 17 and Matthew 24, 27 depict Christ's coming as a visible universal event, not a clandestine affair. Attempts to justify a secret rapture by quoting passages like Matthew 24, 40 to 41 miss the context. Jesus' analogy of Noah's time underscores the separation of the righteous and the wicked at his coming, akin to those who entered the ark and those who were outside to face judgment. As it were, those outside were taken, taken away, killed by the flood. Those who were in the ark were left. They were saved. They survived. 
Now, looking at it from this angle, what would you really want to be taken? And to Paul's admonition in 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 to 4, it indicates that the revelation of the Antichrist will occur before Christ's return. Dispensationalists argue for a two-stage coming of Christ, citing Greek terms like parousia and apocalypsis to denote separate events. However, these terms are used interchangeably in scripture, offering no basis for a seven-year interval. The attempt to insert a gap between the parousia and apocalypsis overlooks the coherence of biblical prophecy and misinterprets Daniel's 70-week prophecy. The notion of a seven-year tribulation period lacks biblical support, relying on a misinterpretation of Daniel's prophecy and a disjointed understanding of eschatological events. Scripture does not corroborate a future Antichrist or a second chance for salvation after Christ's return. Instead, it emphasizes the urgency of accepting salvation now as the day of grace will cease at Christ's second advent. The Bible says that the gospel will be preached to all the world and then the end will come. Everyone has the chance to accept the gospel of Christ now. Anyone can be accepted into God's kingdom or secure a place in the kingdom by the grace of God at any time during this lifetime, even at the last minute, just like the thief on the cross did as he was crucified beside Christ. But this is not an example of delaying until the last minute or depicting the illusion of having ample time. As time is promised to no one, the secret rapture theory presents a distortion of biblical truth, introducing unnecessary complexity and confusion into eschatological discussions. By adhering to the plain teachings of scripture and rejecting speculative interpretations, believers can maintain clarity and confidence in the hope of Christ's glorious return. Let us anchor our faith firmly in the word of God and remain vigilant, awaiting the blessed hope of his coming. It is not the complexity of our theories or the eloquence of our arguments that will stand the test of time. It is the unchanging word of God, our candlelight in a world adrift in uncertainty. May we, in our journey through the mysteries of prophecy, find solace in the knowledge that our faith is built not on shifting sands, but on the solid rock of ages. This isn't just about accepting or rejecting a belief, it's about understanding it, questioning it, and learning from it. Keep that intellectual curiosity burning and continue this journey of discovery. How would you, as a Christian, react knowing that you spent your whole life trying to have a relationship with God and live up to His standards and His will, missing all the raunchy, seemingly exciting, steamy, sweet, sinful pleasures of this life, only to find out it was in vain, watching God pop out of the clouds saying, gotcha, you didn't need to do all of that, you could have just waited until now. Really think about it. Until next time, fare thee well.